it's Ben Hassel here and here in this tutorial we're going to be having a look at how we work in InDesign to create a type block that we can put an image inside um, but we're also going to have a look at how we export that out as a transparent PNG to take into video editing applications like Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro. Um, this is uh, a great technique for creating type in an application that's really designed to deal with a lot of type so if you're interested in um, creating type, perhaps creating lower thirds, then the workflow from InDesign through to Final Cut Pro is a useful one, um, or through to Premiere Pro. Um, and it's also a, a great way of using some of the tools in software that you may already know how to use in your video edits. So without further ado, let's dive in and look at how we work in InDesign to create a type block uh, with an image um, inside it, and then into uh, Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro, keeping the transparency by saving things out as a transparent PNG. So the first thing we're going to do is add our type frame. We'll grab our type tool here and we're going to stretch out a type box. And once we've got that stretched out, we're going to type in some text here and we're going to make this all caps. And once we've got that, we're going to highlight it. We'll center it. We're going to make this open sans and extra bold. And then we're going to increase the point size. Now we can increase the point size from the drop down menu here, or if we place the cursor inside the point size, we can hold down shift and click the up arrow and it will increase by increments of 10. So basically we want to make this nice and big and then decrease the leading so that we get this nice kind of block of type where the, the type is overlapping itself, if you like. Once we've done this, um, we're going to go to our selection tool. Now when we make the outline from this type, it's really important that we move to the selection tool before we make that outline. Um, if we actually create the outlines with the text highlighted, then it does a strange thing of creating a text outline inside our frame rather than just a, a block um, that we would want. So basically, we don't want to do create outlines here yet with the text highlighted. We actually want to come to the selection tool and then select that box on its own and then go to type and create outlines. So once we've created the outlines, you can see we've got this overlapping uh, text here. And what we wanna do is break this apart so that we can then join it back together. So I'm gonna to go to object, ungroup, and then with the, the type overlapping and everything, I can now, with this selected, um, go to window, object and layout pathfinder and I can use the join together or add pathfinder to join that type together. So now you can see the change there where we had lots and lots of different little shapes of each letter overlapping one another. We now have one block of letters when we click the add option and it's just one single shape. So with this selected now we can convert this object or the content of this object to a graphic if we want uh, and this just helps us to see that actually we're going to have a graphic image inside this box. Um, if we want to increase the size of this we can hold down shift and increase the size of it and now we'll go with it selected to file and place and we'll come to this images folder here and we'll change this to icon so that we can see which image we're selecting and we're going to select this image of a kind of textured graffiti brick wall. So we'll open that up. Our image will appear inside our text. And now we need to just kind of fill the image um, so that it fits that uh, space. So I'm going to keep my image selected. And then across on the right hand side, I'm going to use the frame fitting option. So fill frame proportionally. Now, if you're using the older layout for InDesign, you may see some of these options up at the top in the options toolbar. Um, in fact, if you go to window and control, you'll see that options toolbar and we're using the fill frame proportionally button, which is this option or this option up here. So now that we've got that set up, we could enlarge it a little bit more again. So I'm just gonna enlarge it and use the fill frame proportionally button to get that to fill the space. So you can see we've got this kind of nice textured image uh, inside that graphic. And we can still go ahead and use things like the direct selection tool. So if we wanna move these eyes, a little bit closer we can drag a marquee around the outline of those and we can nudge those a little bit closer holding down shift to make it move a bit faster 
and the same with the E's on the right hand side. I can select those and then hold down shift and select these other points down here. And then we can just nudge that to the left again. And now that we've got this lined up just as we want, if we go to file and save first of all, make sure we saved our changes. We'll now go to file and export and it's in the export settings that we can basically save this as a PNG to keep the transparency of that background. So if we export this out now, press save, um, we're going to export just the one page that we've got. We can choose a range if we need to and we can increase the resolution if we want to. So if you're wanting to do some animation or something with your text, then you may want to increase the resolution so that you get more detail in that image and we'll make it maximum and then we're going to make the background transparent. So that's the, the key thing here. So if we make the background transparent and hit export. Now, if we jump into Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, uh, we've got a timeline set up here. So we'll just grab an image here to the end of our timeline. So now if we go to File, Import, we'll import media we'll track down the file that we exported. So now you can see straight away when we select that image, uh, it has a transparent background. So we'll leave the files in place, import selected. And if we drag this down to the timeline now, you can see now we have that transparent background. In fact, we'll just drop down the opacity of the image in the background so that we can see that a bit more clearly. So you can see we can work with images from InDesign um, into Final Cut Pro, or this would work into Premiere Pro as well. Uh, and I'm going to turn off the spatial conforming for fit to none. And you'll see that we actually have quite a high resolution for that image. So if we want to animate it, animate the scale or anything like that, if we want to do any animation on this, then we can do that without losing any quality because we increase that quality at export um, in InDesign. So at 100% here, um, this is a nice kind of crisp, high quality image export that we've worked with. So that's how to create a type outline in InDesign um, and get it into Final Cut Pro or Premiere Pro, depending on which editing application you're using. And one last thing that would be really cool here is if we can put the video inside the text rather than just a still image, which we can do. So we can use the transparency of this text um, to actually stencil out the video in the background. So I'm going to turn the opacity of this video back up. So if we flip this back up to 100 and now I'm going to also just grab the blade tool and we'll trim down the end of this clip. So once we trim that down, um, basically we're going to select the text layer with our transparency, the layer that we've brought in as a PNG from InDesign and we're going to use the blend mode stencil alpha and that will put the video inside our transparent text. So basically now you can see that video is inside the text. Now if we want to layer this up above something else then we'll need to wrap that into a compound clip. So I'm going to grab these two clips and go to file new compound clip and we'll just call this uh, the default name. So now once we've done that and we've made this a compound clip, we can bring this above any layer that we have and it will play back with a transparency. So if we grab a generator from up at the top left here, then we'll come down to our textures generator and we'll just throw in a gradient in the background here. So now you can see, just modify the colors of this gradient. You can see now we've basically made our text in InDesign a custom shape and made it transparent. So the nice thing here, and we can do this from Illustrator or InDesign, but InDesign's a piece of software I use a lot for setting text to make any kinds of shapes with transparency and bring them into Premiere Pro or Final Cut Pro um, and use these blend modes to actually put the video 
or just a still image inside that shape that we've made with transparency. So hopefully this has been useful. If you have any questions about working with InDesign or working with Final Cut Pro, Premiere Pro, then please do leave them in the comment below. Um, and yeah, hopefully uh, we'll see you on the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.